Hello, welcome to another live Google Hangout on the Living Income Guaranteed. And today we will be discussing Slovenia's political awakening. And we have people from Slovenia as our panel today. So let's introduce each one of you. Uh, we got Blaš Ceknar um, from Maribor in Slovenia. Hello. And we have Hilda Ratz. Yes, hi. And Valentin Rosman. Uh, how are you doing? Great, thank you. Okay, so guys, uh, let's begin with the premise that Slovenia, at the eyes of the world, within the recent basic income petition, got the second place right after Bulgaria uh, with the most votes to uh, implement a basic income. As we know, this uh, petition was presented to the uh, EU Commission, but because it, did, it didn't get enough votes overall in the European Union, it didn't make it to become an actual proposal. So let's first discuss what has led to this political awakening in Slovenia. What has happened in terms of uh, people uprising, protesting, blush? Yeah, so um, about two years ago, I think, uh, was the time where the most of these protests started to happen. Um, at that time, I, I was here in Maribor, which is the second biggest city in Slovenia. Um, and what actually triggered the protests here was um, a mayor that was, a new mayor actually, that was very corrupt. And uh, he implemented the radars for cars. Um, you know, just to uh, to gain more money and to make profit, and that was like the last straw for the people here, and they really uh, wanted the mayor to step down, and then the protest started, uh, and then this protest kind of uh, spread also to other cities and expanded to also include, you know, um, other politicians, and so the general vibe in the country was that. You know there is too much corruption, and that this is uh, that it has to stop. And people didn't really know what to do, other to protest and to demand that uh, these politicians and people just step down. You know? So I think that this was um, like a good um, environment because people started to look for you know solutions, what to do, and this um, universal income was also like one of a uh, proposal for change and because of the environment and the protests people uh, get to also got to know this proposal and so it was also popular here okay so we are seeing a, a situation that many other countries are also facing like the realization that this government is corrupted it's not working for the betterment of our society so we start looking for solutions and they resorted to um, essentially uprising and protests. Uh, Hilda, what would you have to say about this um, uprising and what would you say is the contrast that exists within a society that has lived, uh, I mean the older people, has actually lived in the communist uh, Slovenia or as part of Yugoslavia. So what would you say has contributed from this background to the support of this new solution as a basic income? Well, um, uh, yeah, uh, Slovenia used to be a communistic country, so uh, it, its people has, has seen better times, uh, times when they only had to work like eight hours a day, and they had uh, guaranteed living spaces, and everybody was provided a job, anybody who wanted to work. Um, the atmosphere was more relaxed, I suppose, um, and perhaps that is why Slovenians are able to embrace the idea of a living income, of a basic income. Uh, on the other hand, Slovenians are very um, complaining people, they like to complain a lot, so maybe that's also another factor. 
that so you're implying that. that these uprisings come from these usual discontented Slovenians present another regular function of the human being to kind of complain about things when they're not working. Yes, something like that, exactly. Because okay. in the end, uh, the thing that happened was the protests, um, which did create a little bit of awareness of how bad things are, but not, for instance, like Ukraine. That's not nearly as bad as, as it's there. Um, so, um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say, so just let's just Is, keep going. Yeah, in relation to the communist background and you know, kind of people realizing this is not as things used to be, but then there's also the benefits of capitalism that some have also embraced as part of our lifestyles. Uh, there is like a clash in there, um, but we'll take on this topic once again a bit later on. Let's go on to what happened from these uprisings or these people kind of waking, uh, waking up to the idea of things can change. Uh, so, Valentin, how has this movement of the uprisings been directed to, for example, this political participation or political awakening in Slovenia? Yeah, so after uh, several times of uh, these events, uprisings and protests happening in all major cities of Slovenia, uh, some people started to realize that it, nothing will change in reality if we just uh, destroy uh, things on the streets and that uh, some constructive movement uh, should be uh, developed. So the new political party uh, recently established. Of course there are still some people who think that uh, politicians are corrupt, that uh, they have major uh, biases uh, towards uh, politics and they do not want to participate. But uh, within uh, this political party the leaders um, are trying to uh, make a clear point that only by political means any change is possible. So they are now trying to invite people to, uh, to politics, to uh, to remove these uh, biases and um, yeah, the, the more people that will uh, join the, the party and start to assist in creating some uh, practical uh, changes, then the, the uh, situation in our country will actually able to change. Okay, so uh, Blash, can you tell us more about this political organization in terms of its main purpose? Um, are you going or are you planning to participate in it? Uh, what is your position in terms of being uh, a young person in that society that has gone through these uprisings that you explained? What's your position at this moment? Uh, yeah, well, currently the party is still forming. Uh, so the but it, it also has uh, already a program set like a basic program of what it wants to do and support so uh, in the program of the party there is already the universal basic income as a goal of the party um, and i was very happy to see this because i also personally think that this is a good way uh, like a good solution uh, and so i am already participating in the party um, and so it has also some other things in the goals, for example, um, a direct democracy, uh, which I think is also very important that everyone, everybody can participate equally in decision making. So uh, based on just these two uh, things, I think the party is already uh, distinguished from other parties um, who don't really um, support these ideas. Okay, so um, Hilda, if you can tell us, we know that there is uh, quite a huge uh, amount of people that are supporting 
basic income implementation in Slovenia didn't take place because not everyone in the rest of Europe went through it. We got to speak a little bit about the communist background. Uh, but in terms of the current awareness of, for example, young people, 20, 20 and something years old, haven't lived or haven't had this communist background. So yeah. what would you say is going on there? Or who has voted? Uh, you know, most of the people that has voted, uh, do you see them being older people, younger people? What's the political situation there? Yeah, it must have been definitely younger people because uh, Younger people are more open to the idea. Uh, the older people are actually already so much used to being oppressed and overworked and just abused by the system, by the political system, that they don't even see it as a possibility anymore. Whereas young people are finishing school or not even able to finish school because they cannot afford it. There's a big lack of jobs. There's um, the food prices are going up all the time. I mean, the costs of living are actually becoming quite unbearable. So, um, of course, young people are not satisfied and they're looking for alternatives. But uh, in terms of actually moving themselves about it, um, not quite there yet. Also, um, there seems to be a distinct uh, lack of time in a person's life to do this kind of stuff because we now work like I said 12 hours a day at least and many young people also have children, families, other um, stuff to attend to so they probably perceive they're not able to you know invest time in um, being politically active which um, should probably change soon because I think slowly but surely the realization is sinking in that um, the only change that will actually be relevant will be through political means. Yes, I see this uh, as a very important point to uh, also share with everyone that's watching that regularly watches the Hangouts uh, because this is uh, an example of how everything that we've mentioned before uh, in terms of becoming politically active and uh, uniting as people to create these solutions, to establish solutions, uh, Slovenia is already proving that there is already a foundation for it. And it's very interesting from my perspective to hear that it's mostly embraced the idea of basic income due to this communist back background wherein people realize that the idea of freedom, for example, can only exist if everyone else is equally taken care of. And how we can actually, as, as we say, investigate all things, take what's best, and in essence uh, be able to create a new system that doesn't have to, have to be capitalism or communism but the new living standard that we all want, not only for Slovenia, but for the rest of the world. Um, what would you say in relation, this is to anyone, uh, to the political uh, notion, you know, because we say we have to become politically active, but what would you guys say uh, implies becoming politically active? Uh, what does it entail within the concept of self-responsibility within politics? Self-education, definitely. Education about how the system works, how the uh, all the money facets work, how the money system works. That's a very important one. The banking system, um, actually f exposing for oneself um, everything that we used to take for granted. Like we take for granted having a bank account and just, you know, working with money every day and we don't even realize what's actually implied behind it, what's, what's the mechanism behind it, behind the whole... Um, uh, what's it called? Interest, for instance, which causes a lot of abuse. Yes. So yeah, I think self-education about the whole system and how it works and how it operates is the most important thing. So that's how it's been for you mostly in terms of now taking on this point of uh, becoming politically aware and possibly participating as well. Yes. Uh, what about you, Blash? Um, yeah, well, I think that you know, people generally think that uh, politics is, you know, that you can't really do anything with politics and that politics is just a uh, um, thing for corrupt people, you know, but it's not really so and if 
you know, it's all dependent on each one to to actually um, to to become active politically, especially now that we have um, new ways to do this, like with the new party, and you know, we can really um, make it work. You know, but we have to. Um, we are the ones that have to do it. We can't just uh, uh, give this responsibility responsibility to someone else and then um, expect that they will just magically fix everything. You know? So yes, exactly. And right now, I'm sorry, Blaj, did you want to speak? No, you can speak. Uh, because right now we are actually by having politicians and by accepting this idea of politicians, we are actually putting it in their hands to decide about our well-beings, about our healthcare system, about our welfare system. I mean, it's uh, right now, I think it's becoming painfully obvious how this is not working, that somebody else is going to <clears throat> take care of my well-being without me even knowing what is implied in taking care of my well-being. So. That's why I think uh, self-education is so important, uh, you know, to get to know everything, how everything works, and then one can actually make an informed decision and not simply take uh, what one is being served just by exactly. default. Yeah. I absolutely agree with this and uh, thank you for sharing that because we tend to see taking responsibility as something of a burden that it's bad that will make me uh, having to do these things and I don't want to but it's really because we have actually abdicated our responsibility to our lives to how our nations, countries, communities are functioning and working that we've become so disempowered. So taking self-responsibility through becoming politically active is actually the most empowering thing that we can do. And you guys are here to share that, how it can be done and how it begins with self-education, which I fully agree with it. Uh, Valentin, what's your perspective on this uh, point of politics and self-responsibility and your own participation within it now? Yeah, so uh, I have also become a member of this new political party and uh, what has uh, uh, become aware about the participation is that our current political system was working like this that uh, uh, there were some occasions when people could vote representatives of the party in the parliament and then uh, people could not actually influence the decisions that was going on in the parliament. So th there was no ability for the people to actually po participate uh, in the politics. Now, this political party uh, promises this uh, to change. So it wants to establish uh, direct uh, democracy. So. Uh, a system is being developed where members of the political party could uh, actively participate in creating the politics and uh, this would uh, uh, hopefully change the uh, how the people see the politics because currently there has been uh, estimated that about 50 so half of the population has lost interest in political activities. They even do not consider attending uh, voting. So uh, currently we must urgently do something to give people uh, some incentive to reestablish their participation and uh, then uh, to, to change the, the structure so that everyone would be supported properly. I fully agree. We also fully uh, endorse the ability to vote directly, that one man, one vote uh, decides what is best for the entire community, nation, to run a system that benefits everyone. That's the ultimate goal. And I also agree with the notion that, yes, not only in Slovenia, but everywhere else in the world, politics has, has been denigrated to this uh, laughable show that we see on the news. And uh, we only get to know about more and more problems. But 
that is because we have left the whole problem to the hands of a few. So here you guys are sharing how the solution has to come from ourselves politically um, engaging ourselves in a new platform, which is, as we've said also in terms of promoting a living income guaranteed, it has to come from a new political party because the current ones will already have their own establishment, their own people that are supporting it, uh, lobbying the current political party. So I fully agree uh, the fact that you guys uh, are are some are in some are thinking in going into this political party so that there is a new and fresh start to redefine politics as we've also discussed previously in these hangouts and so in relation to um, basic income I know that this is one of the main proposals of this political party uh, as you guys know we are the living income guaranteed and we provide a way to make of a basic income sustainable, meaning we don't only focus on providing money to everyone but or, or making that money available in a sustainable manner, but we also look at the economic structure that has to be implemented to make this happen. So uh, have you guys gotten any uh, perspectives on the living income guaranteed? Any point that you see might work or in terms of Slovenia specifically? Yeah, definitely. Not just in terms of Slovenia, but the whole world. Well, in Slovenia, it's the same actually, like in every country. Um, <clears throat> the uh, it, in the living income uh, proposal, there is the there is the proposal to um, nationalize the big um, companies, which would then uh, provide a <coughs> steady income, which I am very much a fan of. Uh, although right now privatization seems to be the latest show maker. I mean, everybody is talking about it and everybody is hot for it. But I think that's the wrong way to go and that uh, essentially everything should be nationalized. That's how also maximum transparency should be uh, guaranteed so that uh, there is no possibility of abuse. Um, so maybe somebody else would like to expand. Yeah, so uh, I can uh, add to this that uh, I have uh, also participated on the uh, meeting of the society who is promoting basic income in Slovenia and uh, has a lot of credits for, for this here. So the, the new political party also integrated this, but this society has been the, the biggest promoter of basic income grant in Slovenia for um, a, a decade. Um, so at the, this meeting also a member from uh, Austria participated from Austria's uh, basic income, income grant uh, organization and what was interested, uh, interesting that uh, he asked if we are also discussing how to uh, implement basic income grant without using money. So they are already uh, thinking about the next step because uh, the, 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 ma the major idea what the basic income grant is that people will receive some money each month. But what uh, actual needs of the people are our material needs, so food, water, shelter, and so on. And uh, it, we can provide all this without using money, so we can uh, directly establish some new system to distribute these resources. And uh, this would be much easier to do than going through using of the money. And that's a cool suggestion also in terms of living income, how it can go directly from giving or providing this direct access to these living needs instead of giving the money. So thanks for your suggestion there. Uh, we have a question from uh, Rebecca Dalmas. Um, so it says, what if, as I believe it happened in Iceland, the political process allowed the people to vote for an average voice from the populace 
where a person from each area were picked to work together to place policies that supported the local environment. Uh, you guys can read it in the Q&A uh, icon as well. Yeah, so this uh, political party uh, plans to establish local chapters where local chapters will have uh, its own sovereignty to decide how this uh, program would be implemented. And uh, I can also uh, underline that this political party does not have only some nice promises that current parties had, but also uh, actual program that involves uh, exact definitions of the specific current problems in the society, then the solutions, and then also the action plan how to um, manifest these solutions practically. So this is very cool and people can see that uh, uh, the program is very serious, very practical, so now all that is needed is the the support of the people to as many people as possible join this party so that we can have the, the man force to uh, apply this uh, program uh, into reality. Cool. Um, Hilda, what would you say in relation to this uh, political party being formed or the general political awakening in Slovenia? What's your personal perspective on this? Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of division going on in Slovenia among politicians, now I'm talking about politicians, um, where they all want to divide into even smaller units like uh, town units and everybody wants to have their own turf, uh, so to speak, uh, so more funding could be gotten from the state and the European Union. In essence, uh, I have observed a lot of I mean, a lot of competition is still going on. So therefore, um, cooperation is still a little bit out of reach. Um, but hopefully that will improve. So far, it's still a very, very competitive atmosphere in the country, around the world as well. Yes, of course, uh, that is a general trend and that's why it won't be an easy task to then come to these agreements, but by gathering people with one single purpose it does become easier to then get to agreements and to solutions rather than remaining divided because the best way to control population, as we know, is remaining divided. So uh, we really have to work as human beings to learn how to work and cooperate and uh, simply focus on that which will be essentially beneficial not only for myself and everyone else and get beyond any minor um, discrepancies that may emerge. Uh, Blash, um, what's your perspective on this yeah. in relation to yourself, your participation in politics? Uh, well, I think that that the, uh, we have to, in politics, we have to work uh, in a way that we are transparent and just, you know, start working and stop... Uh, um, how should I say? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, yeah, ma mainly complaining, in essence, which is complaining, a, a, yeah. what we were discussing also at the beginning of the Hangout, how we have, as human beings, this tendency of always complaining, and we've been talking about many times about this and now it comes through again. So what would you say yeah. from complaining to? The practical action and you know I think that in politics how we can you know change this uh, idea that uh, you can change things with politics is that we like as a new party for example st uh, start being very transparent and about you know how we do things so that everyone can actually see uh, what are we doing how are we doing and that what are we doing is actually the best for all um, from this intention and when people will see uh, openly that this is our intention you know they will get more um, they will want to participate more you know, they will see for themselves that 
we can actually change and do something that is best for all. Yes, yes we have sorry. to emphasize the solution. Sorry. Go for it. Yeah, uh, the, the, um, we like mainly now people like to focus on the problem and then complain about the problem, but uh, there's not enough emphasis on looking for the solution. So that's what uh, politically active people should actually uh, focus on, uh, pushing for the solution and presenting the solution and presenting also the possible consequences of the solution, which in the case of living income would be a massive relaxing of the pe people and uh, an actual, maybe a new perspective, a new view on the world, because right now people are absolutely crazy because, because of fear of survival. There's no guaranteed survival. There's, if you don't have money, you will die. So once this solution would be implemented, people would actually uh, see life in a much broader scale and also maybe realize their own participation in the whole picture. And also in a brighter manner, I'd say, because we tend to kind of go into the apathy and the general complaints, as we've been talking about, where in protesting just remains as this uprising, the destruction of the infrastructure, as Valentin was also mentioning. And none of this will lead to a solution. So we have to realize that we are the ones that have to make things work in terms of politics. So uh, yeah, exactly. we're, we're now right, um, getting to the end of the hangout. So any last words uh, from you guys? Yeah, uh, maybe uh, to, to explain our also another interesting point within the, the new political party. Uh, they want to assure to avoid any personal uh, misuse of the end positions in the party. So the, the program and the structure is created in such a way that uh, anyone could uh, then remove some person that is being abusive and self-centered. So the, the political party has also have ethical codex and uh, anyone that wants to join must have a clean uh, background, uh, clean past. Uh, so, uh, and also what uh, the, the party wants to establish is the law that uh, if some uh, political polit politicians in the power powerful positions are not uh, doing uh, their jobs in the interest of the people, they could be very easily and very click, uh, quickly removed. So uh, this uh, is also another po another point that uh, wants to uh, be as. Uh, uh, some form of trust giving uh, for the other people. Okay, that sounds great and it goes in alignment to what we also propose many times, transparency, uh, being able to develop self-integrity as well to become part of politics, which is also what ourselves as individuals must integrate as part of our living principles, which is also part of our philosophy, so to speak, in terms of living income. Uh, Lash? Yes. Uh, any last words? Uh, no, that's that. <laughs> okay, Hilda? Yeah, I think uh, I've said everything. So I just wish that uh, people uh, become more active in seeking for the solution. Because right now we are like, like you once said in a video, in a vlog, we are like children. And the whole humanity is like in this infantile state. And now we have to grow up. And we have to realize that we are the ones responsible and take that responsibility. We become yeah, exactly. that we have to educate ourselves. That's Absolutely it. agree. Thank you guys yeah. very much for your time and participation yeah. here. And uh, I will leave uh, in the information of this video um, places where you can contact any of them uh, for further information or if you want to just contact them. And next week we will have yet another Living Income Guaranteed. Google Hangout, so stay tuned for next week at the same time. Thank you guys and bye. Bye. Thank you, Marlene. Bye.